Oh, they're robots. Just turn them off. <laughs> <laughs> Just push that button on Data's back, dude. Good afternoon, everybody. Today we're going to discuss smooth solo sailing of Stellaris. So this is a game that's been a long time coming for us here at Mo's Bros. We, we've been a big fan of the Space Forex genre for a while now. And as usual, we are fans of normal Forex as well. Plenty of Civ, plenty of Total War, not as much forex -y as the others, but you know, plenty of Civ, plenty of, what was that other one called? Um, ooh, Endless Space. I got some Endless Space in there. Oh boy. This is a long list of games we got here. Sins of the Solar Empire. So we're, we're, we're big fans here of the 4X space genre. Sort of sailing, as they say. Some Stellaris, some Sins of the Solar Empire, some No Man's Sky. You know, I know that one's not 4X, but it's still going around this infinite universe. So, here with Stellaris, what we're seeing is quite the game. It's just, it's so relaxing to start a game and then you know you have nothing but menus to look forward to. You know, you have all these games like Civ, Sins of a Solar Empire, Total War, they, they like to make it look like what really matters is, is the action that you're seeing. But then comes along Stellaris, the kind of game that just lets you watch growth happen. Empire growth through charts, bars, and graphs. Do you need any more food? Mm, no, I'm okay on food. Okay, no, sure. I'm good on everything except sprawl. My sprawl's really bad. Yeah, I'm a little, um, over on sprawl. What's, what's yours? Uh, 110 over 106. Well, oh, mine's way worse than that. Mine's 88 over 72. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. I've got an administrative office on the way, but... See how that goes. My big problem right now is power, but I've been building uh, generators just like crazy. Yeah, I've got plenty of power now. Kind of. I don't know. I, I, the only thing that I have that I'm making like a ton of is is whatever those red diamonds are. Minerals. What are you making? I, I have tons of minerals. I have minerals everywhere. But it does it all to quite the soundtrack. I think at the end of the day, the full package when it comes together, you'd agree, is quite the game. Anomaly found. So much shit just happened right now. What the? Do you know what a transport ship is? Is that a colony ship? But just kind of like the way Stellaris works, we'll start from the very beginning. The loading screen, the race creation screen, and then finally moving into the empire screen. So let's just jump in. Looking at the race creation screen, you'll see there's quite a variety here, especially now of all of the expansion packs that have come out. You know. There's bird people, there's human people, there's rock people, there's insect people. There's all kinds of people, there's robots. You know, really, really whatever you want to be, you can be here. And you're not just being the one, you are being the entire race. But really at the end of the day, you gotta ask yourself, are you a rock? Are you a bird? Are you a human? Eventually, you'll find out. But each of these spe species comes pre made with their own empire backgrounds and background stories. But even better than that, you get the opportunity to create your own race. And here is where you get your first taste of really how deep this game can get. But I recommend for the starting options. You go with one of the premium races, it just feels more intuitive. 
and you're gonna have plenty of time to make differences later in the long run, except for a few of the species, such as the rock species. You're not really gonna notice a difference between the races. But, you know, the rock people, they eat minerals. They don't eat food because they're rocks. And their ships are made of rocks because they're rocks. And really, the motif is rocks. But everybody else, they have some good motifs. Um, the rock people, the mineral people. A little, a little too much when you get down to it. But, you know, the Zen Empire, one of my favorites to play. It's pretty interesting how it's not just about the race that you are. Really, you gotta get into the ideologies of your race. So you have some that are very accepting of slavery. You have others that all they want is peace. Some of them want slavery through religion. Others would like peace through religion. And some of them are just big mushrooms. You don't know what you're going to get with this game. You just encounter things all over the place. Of all different kinds. And factions. So, whether you're a platypus, a bird, a reptile, really what's going to matter is So, moving into the start of the game, we start with one planet in homeworld. We've recently discovered hyperspace flight. But for you, the galaxy is empty. So you're going to advance quite quickly once you discover you're not alone out there. But the early game, I'd say, is, to me, the most fun part of the game. When we first start discovering at a slow rate, small stories here, small stories there. One of the greatest things of this game is that it builds itself a unique story for every race that you run and for every game that you play. Oh look, more unemployed humans. And also I have pre-sapient Ugarlarks. I can't send them anywhere else. Depending on which artifacts you find and how you want to research them, or what your choices want to be, or really what kind of an empire you have. But maybe there are other ways to play it, but I seem to always play towards more science, as the stories that you get to read are quite in depth. From finding old timey theme parks that turned out to be worldwide killing machines to discovering an unlocked DNA genome in your species that turns you from a reptile to a bird over the course of 10 days until finally your entire species evolves from your reptilian roots into the nice flowing manes of the avian version variety. Anyways, this beginning part, this is definitely the most enjoyable part of the journey. Because it feels like these are still in your control. But quickly you'll realize you need to expand if you are to survive. And this is where my problems begin with the game. Up until this point everything seemed above board, I would say. Until we start getting into the empire management, the scope of it. So you start spreading out. And as you spread, there's a few things that go into place that will destroy your empire. Things such as control, order, your resources, the food consumption of your people. And I would say this is usually the most fun part of one of these games for me, but in this game, it seems arbitrary. I couldn't tell you how many times I have a significant food surplus as my worlds are developing. And then all of a sudden, with no new worlds being developed, no technologies researched, with no enemies coming aboard to invade my property. All of my people began starving very quickly. I don't like that. I don't like it one bit. There's no log to tell you what caused the change. There's not a famine indicator. There's not anything in specific that will point you in the right direction. What there is, is a little ticker at the top that says minus 200 
and you have 15,000 left, then you better not hit that fast forward button because it'll go quicker than you think. So as you move forward in your empire, there's all these secrets that keep happening. One of those is, research in this game is done with a random number generator. You don't really know when you'll have that battle cruiser, or when you'll have the upgraded spaceport. Eventually, and as time goes on, those clicks keep on clicking until finally your random number generates you a starport big enough to stop an opposing fleet. Other times, you're stuck with the Corvette until the mid game, and then an enemy species comes through with their battle cruisers. Wow. You were lucky you got those Starfort researches, but Starfort is no match against the Battle Cruiser, and it's hundreds of swarming corvettes. And my hundreds of swarming corvettes, usually in the dozens, not the hundreds, definitely stands no chance. Usually in these campaigns, once the aggression begins, the aggression goes and goes and goes until the aggressive side either wins or burns themselves out. Wait, so if I chop trade with you, your society just goes under? <laughs> yeah, we depend on you. Wait, for food? Yeah. Yeah, you saved my life. I notice. This is one of the cooler events in the game, actually. As to get aggressive, you'll see the empires of the galaxy start to join forces. As they join forces, more trade happens, more prosperity occurs in the face of this overwhelming danger coming your way. But in the end, there will be casualties. And even further in the end, likely the galaxy will fall. And that's not even to say about the end game content. The end game, there are special events that happen. Things such as intergalactic invasions that force people to join sides in order to stop them. But in reality, these are easier than when the in-game, mid-game content funnels you into a position where you can't defend yourself and you happen to be spawned next to hyper-aggressive, hyper-dominant machine species. The pretty common occurrence. And at, at the end of the day, a frustrating one. After spending 10 hours in a galaxy, building an empire, lose to run the generator of whether I'm about to or not. Ah, oh, Starhold, finally! No, I'm not saying this is totally the game's fault. Or maybe I should have done more research into research. But really, when I research, I want to learn things other than how to do more research. But the soundtrack unifies all this into a package in which it is easy to digest. Stars, pretty enough. The galaxy map, it's pretty enough. At the end of the day, you're just going to be going through menus and menus and menus. This will be the kind of game that when your fiance asks you, I was playing that game last night. What do you call it? Stellaris? And you respond, it was great. I saw 1,000 menus. And they'll say, why don't you go back to work? It's 9 a.m. the next day now. And I'm okay with that, because it is that kind of game that sucks you in. And the soundtrack pulls you in with it. How did school work? In the Fleet Manager, we can create Castles. templates for our military fleets. As our fleets grow in size, these templates make it easier to quickly order replacements for any losses they may have sustained. Now, as good as the soundtrack is, I do not want to sing its praises too much. Or it does begin to repeat itself, because you are playing this game for 10 hours straight. And there is no different soundtrack for combat, or for menus, or for exploration, because it is all the same thing, just a different menu. But you listen to the soundtrack one way through, two ways through, three ways through, and you'll remember back to the day when you first played the game, and the soundtrack struck you like an angelic chord, drew you into this game, so you would accept the hell that was the menus coming for you. 
But still, you soldiered on because the soundtrack kept giving and giving and giving until I had no more to give. At which point, it was just a stump to sit on. And while you started playing your YouTube soundtracks. The game, compared to Sins of a Solar Empire earlier, and I want to say it's a better game than Sins of a Solar Empire. But at the end of the day, that isn't true. For this game, it's exciting. The stories are exciting. And the ideas are great. But even through just two playthroughs, you begin realizing you've got the same stories again. The same theme park story. The same giant floating entities between the stars. The same sentinel species guarding over a tomb. The same robot species trying to get into your borders and tell you that you suck. The same rat species trying to sell you gold when all you have is minerals. Same research ships, researching the same planets. Really, the only thing that there wasn't enough of in this game was the indigenous societies. You put a little outpost above them, and then randomly you'll get a story about what happened at the outpost. Now, these random stories are great, but much like the soundtrack, when they begin to repeat, the game begins to show its wear. It almost feels like when you get a new episode of Star Trek, and you think, Wow, haven't I seen this before? Sometimes in Deep Space Nine, they would repeat the same storylines from the next generation. And it's different because you have a black captain, but at the end of the day, it's still the same storyline. But anyways, Dolores. It's a great game with great concepts. The co-op is amazing. It's not easy lose track of it, like in most games. You join, you can play together, each system saves the file to this hard drive. Anybody can invite anybody into any game later, at later dates. Well, two nights ago, oh, I was building a, uh, 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 <laughs> oh, I remember what I had going on. I, I, had, I had a little campaign. Right. I had a little, a little campaign going on. Oh, you did, yeah. Over, and, and I was building over, up my over there. because I was like, "Hey, he can't—he can't be the only one." Once they are in the game, you can play forward, and if one of them has to drop, the game will continue. It will not crash. It's nice to see this in a forest game. Many forest games make it difficult. Frankly, many games make it difficult. Period. I heard somebody quote once that it was easier to play a game online. In the original Xbox than it is today on PC. I believe it. But anyways, playing this game online is great because you can tell each other the stories that are occurring and then they make you talk. But even greater than that, you can get very drunk while playing this game. And while you may fail, it makes it more fun because you're looking at menus. Because some of the stories really strike a chord when you're in an inebriated state. And then you discuss it with your brother whom which you're playing with. It has a very similar sense of humor and desire for sci-fi stories. At the end of the day, play this game for the stories, not for the gameplay, not for the combat, not for the diplomacy. Really all of those are subpar for the genre, as is the resource gathering and the planetary management. Really, it's 4X Lite, it feels like. It feels like at this point they should have dived more into the combat, or more into the city management, slash planet management, or diplomacy, or any of the above. But as it stands, the game feels light. A quick version of the 4X. Not a bad one, but a quick one. That I'm sure is deeper than I'm giving it credit for. But does not ask you to dig that deep. So I do not recommend this game to all those out there. I recommend this game to people that want to read sci-fi, that suck at reading and hate reading, and must be tricked into it. But if you're like me, and you like sci-fi, and you would like to be tricked into reading a sci-fi novel, play this game. If you're not like me, and you're good at reading books, read a book instead. 
you want to see combat in your forest game, play Sins of a Solar Empire. If you wanted to see diplomacy and resource management, then play Endless Skies. But if you want a little bit of each, without as much depth as you would like, play this game. Dolores, do I recommend it? If you're like me, yes I do. If you're not like me, no I don't. Or play it. Or read a book. Those are your options. Anyways. One final point. The art style in this game is good. Except for the characters. They move like they're from South Park. Or Fallout Shelter, I'm not sure which. Robots need more jobs. I can't just turn them off. So, I need more consumer goods. It makes me very uncomfortable because it looks like they're all semi-paralyzed or having a stroke or something. I don't like it. Except for the fungus creatures, but they don't have bones. So I don't know what to think. Anyways, on that note, have a good evening. Enjoy Stellaris, or don't. Not up to me. But if you can find it for cheap, at least the music is worth it play through the soundtrack once while playing, but then you will know how you feel about the game. Good night. <laughs> Is that what this sounds like? <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> I think I nailed it. Yeah, you're right. My bad, you nailed it. <laughs> 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 so terrible, man. Good <laughs> <Any sense. laughs> It'd definitely be more like. <laughs> like what? Why? Why is there so much air coming through it? Because it's too foul. <laughs>